Um, and I'm excited. I'm, all, I'm excited about every Fit Pro Connection. We have been doing this Fit Pro Connection since COVID began the end of March. Um, we started out, we just wanted to stay connected with you guys um, because, uh, I mean, for obvious reasons. So it's very popular. We get new people. We get people who just want to just want to stay connected and it's just so important for everybody in the world everybody in the country but as fitness instructors we love people we love people and we love connecting and we love the interaction and if we need to do it on zoom right now this is what we've been doing so each week we have a topic we have a title we have and uh, this this time, um, I'm Janice Jakes. I'm the host. Um, this time, I teach Aqua myself. I've been teaching for, I just realized today that I've been teaching for almost 35 years because my daughter, who lives here in Huntington Beach, is turning 35 next week. And I started teaching. I was pregnant with her in 1985. I'm really dating myself, but that's how I st <laughs> started. Um, and if you want to I happen to have a podcast. So... <laughs> <laughs> shamelessly promoting that. So I started teaching when I was, um, well, after I was pregnant with her, I was asked to start teaching. So I started teaching swim lessons and water aerobics way back then. And I've been teaching and training ever since. I'm the owner of the Fitness Fest Conference and Expo. We have been, the Fitness Fest Conference and Expo is a conference for fitness professionals based out of Phoenix, Arizona. And we, 22 years, we were scheduled. We rescheduled for September 24th to the 27th. I, I personally never imagined um, that we would not be able to do that live. But Arizona numbers uh, are, are pretty horrible. Um, governor rules, uh, number rules. It, it just was, uh, I don't even want to say unfortunately, because we are going to have a great time virtually. And we are going to make Fitness Fest virtual September 24th to 27th more special than any other virtual conference and as special as we can, we're going to do prizes and giveaways and we're going to have a lounge and we're going to have a chat and we're going to, we're going to interact as much as we can. We're going to reach out and feel everybody. We're going to talk to each other as, as, as much as we can. And we have a hundred great workshops, over 50 speakers. So we are going to get together come hell or high water, September 24th through the 27th. So, um, My three, my three guest speakers, um, Ashley Bishop, if you can raise your hand. Ashley Bishop is an, um, are you an AEA trainer, Ashley? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, an AEA trainer, an international aqua presenter and Zumba presenter. She has presented for Fitness Fest as well. And we are very excited. Uh, she lives in Las Vegas and we're very excited to have her as part of um, the, the aqua team. Uh, this afternoon. And Manuel, Manuel Velasquez, did I say your name right, Manuel? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Perfect. Woohoo. <laughs> uh, Manuel has been presenting at Fitness Fest uh, for many years as well. And uh, first, I want to say he is the king of humor. Um, I follow you on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and you give great videos, and you're just a hoot. And of course, when you're at Fitness Fest, you're so popular. You're not just funny, but you're good, too. You're good at what you do. You're an international presenter, um, aqua, yoga, uh, Zoom, um, dance. You're a great dancer. Uh, so, and, and you live, you're right now coming from us from uh, Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, right? Yeah, across the yes. border. If you're in San Diego, two, 25 miles south, two miles inside the border of Mexico, uh, in the Tecate town, actually. Tecate, where the Sorry, brewery um, is. And I, I, yeah, I've gotten to go and there then, once as Monica Picard's guest. So. Yeah. And then Rancho La Puerta, which is where I am right now. This is a guest lounge that I had to transform into my streaming studio, as you can see, with yeah. lights and stuff, because I'm living in the resort. We don't receive guests since March. <laughs> Sorry, he's, uh, my life is so hard. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and I had to make the best out of the situation. I am not working except for zooming like a crazy madman, and I'm using the resort because they let me. I, as an employee, I can stay here as long as I need to. Then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> woohoo! All right, and Laura, Laura Moss. Hello. Laurel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. You are frozen. Okay. 
All right. Laurel is the owner of Sprint Aquatics. They are one of our, they're actually sponsoring this Zoom call. They're one of our sponsors for Fitness Fest. They were with us in 2019 as well. Um, Laurel has been in the uh, aquatics industry as far as her amazing equipment. As a matter of fact, I use her equipment all the time. I did a little video with the equipment, which I should be releasing <laughs> soon um, one of my projects so um, we appreciate you sponsoring um, fitness fest and sponsoring our zoom call she is coming to you from her pool as you can see and she's going to show us some of her great equipment a little bit later so welcome laurel ashley and manuel and welcome everybody everybody on the call so um, everybody's muted um, and my speakers and joanne if, if at some point you can't hear me and uh because, you know, technology, it happens. So um, we're going to start with our first question. How has your life as a water fitness professional changed since COVID-19? So um, I'll start. Um, since I have been teaching, I actively teach water aerobics. I teach three classes in a row on Thursdays in Chandler, Arizona. I've been at that particular location for over two decades. And uh, I... Arizona opened up their gyms, and so I was able to go back and teach. And what's interesting was you get so used to not teaching and not going anywhere and being at home and, you know, not even, you know, your car barely starts up because you haven't been driving it. And I'm like, gosh, this is, I don't know if I even want to do this. And I got there that first day. It gives me goosebumps. I, in my first class, during COVID is still going on as I did when I left because they were so anxious to get back. They just, that sense of community. And I'm like, oh, wow. I am so excited to be back. So taught my classes. I think we were in business maybe three weeks, maybe four. So I taught three or four classes in a row. And um, then we, 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 the governor shut the gyms and tubing down. Um, so now that's another story that I won't get into. But um, so unfortunately, haven't been back since. And that's been probably a couple months now. So we're, Arizona's just kind of holding on when they're going to reopen the gyms. So um, that has really changed for me, of course, um, the teaching. But also, I'm, I'm, I train. I have an eight-hour live certification. Year. I was just getting on a real knee and then this. So I had to cancel. I had three lined up. I had to cancel all three of them. Um, I have been working on actually an online certification. I've been working on it <laughs> since like last September. So I started to try to up my game and try to finish that up. Um, and the, I, I finished the lecture portion, which is half of it, like four hours of it. And then just before the gym shut down again, I was able to do, they did the online portion um, the lecture portion at home, and they were able to go to for our four hours of the live training. And I got to tell you, I loved doing it that way because we were able to spend more really quality time when we were together in the water. So I was able to do that. And then too late to uh, two days later that shut down. So my life has changed as an aquatic professional extremely by having to cancel all the lives by not continuing to grow with that. And then of course, fitness fest um, going virtual and trying to figure out how I'm going to do my aqua presentation. I've got some ideas, but um, you know, and, and Ashley and I have actually spoken about it, uh, about how we're going to do all that. So we'll share that a little bit. So yeah, that's me, um, Ashley. How about you? How has your life changed Gosh, as an aquatic uh, fitness professional? <laughs> yeah, it changed a lot. I mean, those who know me, I know I have a, a few people I've worked with before in the past on the call. I usually travel almost every weekend doing workshops or certifications or jam sessions. And then during the week, I teach local classes like, you know, we all do. And so I remember there was like a day, it was like March 14th and everything from now until September or from then just canceled and all my flights had to get canceled and it was interesting because we had to pivot very quickly um, to this virtual world. And I know, like I said, Jeannie's been in a jam session with me. Vicky's been in a jam with me for Zumba. Everything pivoted virtual. All of our jam sessions went virtual, which was kind of scary, but also extremely fun because I've been able to have people from all over the world in the same session, which has been amazing. 
Um, I've been able to spend some more time at home. So my cats know me now, which is kind of nice. I always wanted cats and they loved my husband more than me. But now that I'm home, they're starting to like me. So that's fun. Um, and then, of course, everything virtual and aquatic wise, too, has started happening. So we're my life as a trainer, we're now leading workshops with AEA virtually. Our certification is going virtual. So it's a lot of a lot of change, but it's exciting. And I'm kind of getting used to being right here. So it's going to be weird when we can start traveling again. But I do miss real humans and traveling. So that's that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like what you say because you're, you're, you've got to take the positive twists. You know, we've got to be positive and take, you know, take and, and pivot. And that's the word of the, the, the <laughs> decade or the, the year 2020 is pivot and reinvent and be positive and, and figure out how we can make ourselves happy and, and stay connected whatever way. So thank you, Ashley. How about you, Manuel? How's your life changed? But my life is a reflection of Ashley's too. As, as a presenter teaching conference, I have from March to here. Um, yeah, I miss it. I miss the airports. I miss the traveling, the packing, the going out, the change of scenery, the scenery around me. Um, it's been challenging not to do all that, even though, as Ashley said, I'm liking it a lot just to wake up and walk maybe, I don't know, a few yards and I'm here in my studio. I start working. I am not wasting time changing and commuting or anything. Uh, it just, it happens quickly. I've been opening, actually, I've been kind of a, been challenged to, because as I mentioned before, when we were in the pre-show, I went from boomer to zoomer to not knowing a lot of a lot of technical things in the computer to become a zoomer immediately right in in, in three or four days I had to learn music uh, mixers uh, adapters microphones lights uh, the studio uh, projection voice uh, coaching and um, one of the big things that I like a lot about this new change is like I I've been be I think all of us, in a way, we are becoming slowly better coaches because it's not about just what you see and yell. Now you need to be more aware, <laughs> way more aware, that the people who are receiving the message are not present and probably you won't see them. You need to make your mind in, and I, this is what I do. I imagine every time I teach on Zoom that I got the best, the most amazing students that they can follow everything and anything. But at, at the same time, I need to coach them in a way that they they keep doing the right things because you don't see them all the time. You need to you need to become a better coach, and 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 I like that in a way. I miss I miss the traveling. I miss the the human contact. But I like a lot this kind of new adventure. A new, a new adventure in different ways. I've been, for the last three weekends, I've been teaching classes for Malaysia and people in Malaysia and in India. I'm Latin dance, yoga, and Tai Chi <laughs> for people in India and you're in Malaysia, which is like the world now is really, really small. On the, on the touch of your screen, you connect with Zoom and suddenly you are connecting with people from all around the world. And I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Then, yeah, my life, I think when, when things start getting better and we start connecting back again with, real, with the new reality or whatever that reality is going to be, um, I am, I'm thinking that my professional skills now are improving in different ways, technically, um, coaching-wise, and mentally. I am ready just to keep this going and then do something else. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I discovered that I have talent for acting. I've been doing TikToks and I've been promoting myself through the web page, mimicking, sh doing dancings, making jokes. I have a natural talent to do that. I just, I didn't know that. Now I know. We could I have know. told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I discovered that once I learned Zoom, actually I've been helping uh, another co-workers or colleagues professionally doing digital manipulation images and things that I never knew I would I you know you get an application and you think well I'm gonna spend my my my, my free time playing here with the phone or the iPad now you're becoming that I, I can make money doing money marketing and some uh, graphics uh, with the cyber world I didn't know that before the COVID now I I think I, I'm 
compartmentalizing new skills that I'm gonna be able to use in the future for my for my web page, for my professional development, and yeah, um, and different levels of get money because now it's <laughs> We're not working. We need, we have to find ways to. Right. I love it. That's great. We do. Yep. We do. Thank you, Manuel. How about you, Laurel? Well, um, my situation being a supplier is much different because, you know, we supply the, the products that are used in a lot of these programs. And the problem is, is that nobody is purchasing you know, the products because they don't know when it's going to come back online. So, um, you know, our, our sales have dropped over 60% from March. So that's a huge hit. So, you know, we're, you know, by the grace of God, we're still here. I I'm still been able to, to keep my staff employed. And so, you know, we're doing, you know, events like what you're, you know, you, you're a part of Janice and, um, it just trying to uh, evolve in a in a in a new way, in a positive way. Just trying to trying to stay positive through all this, you know, because we're all kind of in this together. And and um, you know, you you got to always look at the positive because the negative is just so so uh, frustrating. So yeah, it's been it's been challenging, but we're we're hanging in there. So anything that we can do, and um, you know, this is one reason why we're sponsoring this, and then. Uh, also offering 15% off of our products through the Fitness Fest event in September to, to try to help people that might have, you know, um, pools at home that they can access uh, to supply their needs, uh, you know, at that level as well. Well, it's a, it's a perfect safe you know, workout and is, is working out in the water and especially in the summer, you know, I've been doing it. I, you know, Laurel, I've got a belt and I've got the bells and it's a great workout. Um, in Arizona, um, it's, it's just the perfect thing to do. And, and, and met, well, really it, every, every part of most parts of the country, I assume, um, it's, it's the time to get in our pool and work out. So, um, it, it, you know, we can't, the gyms are closed in most parts, a lot of parts of the country, certainly in Arizona. I, I know in California, um, I don't know you, if you guys want to put in the chat, if your gyms are opening or if they've been closed, open, ours are open, closed. So, um, Getting some of Sprint Aquatics equipment would be the thing to do right now, everybody. And I'm sure we'll put the information in the chat about um, how you can how you can do that. And you know, it's not about getting a, a small group of women in, in my backyard pool and doing a workout um, because they miss it so much. So um, can everybody hear me? It says my internet is unstable. But you can still hear me. Okay, good. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we're going to go on to number two which is um, what do you think about um, the sanitation rules in regard to equipment and spacing and just keeping everybody safe? Um, I think I'll start with you, Manuel, because you said that um, the, the ranch is, you know, they've got a beautiful pool and very strong um, aqua aerobic. Um, yeah, we run about 25 sessions. Starting uh, and stopping and I'm sure they've got a, some good procedures. So tell us about that. Tell us what you guys are planning. Our pool, it's, our pool is outdoors and it's a beautiful yeah. outdoor pool. We think, thankfully, recently we developed or we final the, we finished the construction of a area for restrooms which are open and with big, huge doors to get in. Um, what the ranch has been doing first is just training and coaching the um, the employees, all the yeah. staff not only the fitness staff but the staff who is around in maintenance or in public areas which means um, in a way it's kind of a empower everybody to become coach a coach uh, we call them um, ambassadors like hospitality ambassadors that they're gonna be uh, posted and around our pool during class before during and after class guiding our 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 guests into the way of how to get into the locker room 
how to get the showers out. And we designed a little a uh, little hearts with the uh, with the ranch logo to sp to spot the walls and to spot the floor just to manage the physical distancing that everybody calls social distancing but it's more physical distancing we're going to be social anyway yelling at each other hey yeah. but it's, <laughs> it's the physical distance what is it's important to maintain that distance uh and uh, the training empower every person involved into into the uh, water fitness classes to be aware that they are kind of a representative of the ranch and with kindness and with a, a, a pre 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 learned speech refer to the people and to guide them and to empower them to follow through with uh, with uh, with the rules basically with sometimes rules became become a little bit uh, itchy or could be challenging and we have guests who has been here for 40 50 60 times and they feel that they own this place and you know what they kind of do in a way <laughs> they've been sponsoring out for years and years and years and they have things to say and they don't they don't hold those things back but we are training our employees and our uh, uh, fitness staff to be kind of a very mindful ambassador of goodwill that means everybody has to follow certain hygiene rules these are the spots that we are going to do before classes uh, classes are going to be uh, 45 to 55 minutes and we do not have back-to-back -back classes anymore as we used to. We are giving a cushion of 30 minutes between each class to be sure people come early enough to get and follow the spots and and, and follow the rules and follow the the, the travel, the, the, the physical map that we just designed for them to get in and get out. Um, and then the same thing happens for the next session. We are thinking, and actually we are planning to have more sessions than we used to, even though we have about 25 sessions a week. We are gonna have even more because the timing. Um, we, are, we cannot have more than maybe 20 people in the pool. Even though it's a big pool, if we want to really follow and observe the physical distancing that we require, uh, we need to less less to let less people come in, and we will need to offer more sessions. And that was that is the essential plan right now. We are having more sessions. We are having a cushion time between sessions, and then we have ambassadors guiding or welcoming. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome. These are the procedure. My name is, and we're gonna follow this way. Blah 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 blah. And I think it's it, in terms of customer service and uh, manage what we do, which is wellness and mindfulness in this environment. I'm working at a resort, and resort people come to be pampered and to be taken care. It's like doing that exponentially way much better than we used to be, and I am really excited of that because it's in a way we are. Ex I expect to excel in service and in in, in 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 pampering people and that we never did before. And yeah, that's basically what we were doing. Are you using equipment and how do you feel about that? We are using noodles, we are using hambuis, we are using coughs and uh, um, they are gonna give they are gonna be given out like the Ambassador is the one in charge of manipulating, taking out and put them back. Um, we are not so worried about the contact with because the chlorine in the water, it's killing the, the we, I hope, the, the chlorine. <laughs> the, 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 environment, the pool environment is safe enough to kill the virus, but it's just that pre and post. Extra. Mm -hmm. that before you get the equipment and after, but we're going to have ambassadors with that. One thing that I really like a lot here now is we uh, maintenance and engineer put now, we have these beautiful sinks, like really beautiful sink with water and this system that you just, with a pedal on the floor, you get water and there's washing hand stations everywhere in every fitness room and we have 14 fitness rooms plus the pool, three pools. Yeah, it's just like, Plus the lounge like this, we have a, a in front of me. There is one. They're putting one this week. Oh, it's it's just we are taking extreme measures for everybody to you know to feel to feel and be safe. Uh, the general manager bought these uh, three-dimensional printers. He's printing this um, this um, cover face. Uh, um, 
mica cover things with the print with the hanging i don't know how to talk right now how, it, <laughs> how to say it <laughs> But it's like a cap, and then, yeah, he's printing those things every day just to have enough for everybody who's going to be involved, just to be sure people feel safe interacting with whoever is welcoming there. And, yeah, I feel really, uh, really empowered and really positive that the reception is going to be great and we will be able just to manage safely. Because it's safely, if you don't feel safe, they are, your, your students are not going to be uh, They're not going to have a good time or... Oh. feel comfortable yeah thank you manuel how about you ashley yeah um i'm teaching one well technically two classes a week right now it's my bigger box gyms here in las vegas have open like eos 24 oh. ish um and other facilities but the pools haven't opened in those facilities yet um but i do work at a very private club where it's members only like residents only it's a beautiful facility and so we have a gorgeous outdoor pool if you're on my instagram i posted a picture yesterday it's so pretty it's so pretty it's one depth it's gore it's like oh it's perfect and so we do outdoor aqua zumba so we don't have equipment right now um there's enough space for everyone we have to take our temperature upon entering and so you can't come in unless your temperature is correct everyone must be masked within the facility a locker rooms aren't open, so you have to use your, well, they live there and there's restrooms for other people to use. And we stay masked until class starts. They get in the water, no mask, and I take my mask off then. Um, and then we have opened up indoors, but again, the facilities are very small. And honestly, I've had maybe one person come to Land Zumba because they just don't feel comfortable working out yet, which is fine by me. I'm happy to just be there for aqua and then, you know, be outside and return back. And then, so again, we're not using equipment yet, so that I haven't had to cross that bridge at this point in time. <laughs> okay, well, I teach in an indoor pool. So, um, you know, we, with that and with more rules. Uh, so when I did go back, um, the facility, and it's, it's not a very populated gym, anyway but they had one of those mats that when you step on your you step on it and it's supposed to not bring your germs inside they have all these all the spray and the rags um i brought them into the pool area uh i looked on the cdc site and i i thought i remembered a couple months ago they were saying to say spray your equipment and now i don't and laura looked at it too so i'll have to ask her now i didn't see anything about that I personally did spray, but I personally thought it was overkill to spray that type of equipment. Equipment plus the chlorine. I did it just as an extra measure, just like you said, Manuel, to make people feel, and, and actually to make people feel more comfortable. Um, they all kind of looked at me funny. Um, all the chairs were, you know, we used to have a bunch of chairs all over, so we took most of them away. Um, it's challenging for me because as an instructor, I teach on the deck and I use like 19 chairs. <laughs> I put my crap all over the place and I go from here to here and here I demonstrate here. But anyway, so not to have everybody's stuff on chairs and not to have that. Um, stuff in, in, into uh, the indoor pool. Um, one thing, and this is whether it's land or aqua as far as is, uh, sanitary and safety but like the drinking fountains i kind of thought they should close them and my gym didn't and i you know there was one woman who forgot to bring her water and there she goes up there and she starts like i'm like no wait let me get you a water you know so all those things that you have to think about not so many chairs there the equipment um we did space out people and like you said manuel uh not uh there were we can fit probably 14 or 16 and i did have 16 the first day and so uh as far as if you really want to be six feet apart um we were going to max it out at 16. Um, there were like little uh um you're supposed to stay in that row it's really hard to really do that but uh just we we did have it there um what else um we had the lysol spray um, we had the markers, the numbers and pool. Uh, and then uh, we're supposed to wear masks leading up to teaching. Um, I know there's a big thing about masks and teaching with masks and how that's not great, all that. Um, I, I teach on the deck, um, teaching with a mask in the water or anyone in the water with a mask, definitely 
we learned that's definitely Um, and for me on the deck, like I had someone ask uh, another instructor asked me if I was going to teach with a mask on the deck. I'm like, I'm 20 feet away from them. So no, I am not going to teach with a mask. So that's me. But, um, and then we talked about ventilation on one of the other zoom calls, um, a couple months ago. And, and I, it was interesting because when I was looking at the CDC website, they were talking about having fans and I was I was read not to have fans because that's just kind of more spreading the crap around. So um, instead for ventilation, I opened the doors. Now outdoor pools, you're not going to have that challenge, but I opened as many doors as I could and tried not to set off the fire alarm and did not. We have fans above and I did not turn on the fans because I kind of, I had to, I had to be responsible and feel what I felt safe for my, for my students and myself. And so that's what I decided to do. Um, a lot of you who are teaching independent, you've got to just really think for yourself, like what you feel is safe for your students and yourself. If you're teaching for a facility, they should have some really good rules set up. And if they don't, then they should figure it out what's best for them and the safety of you, not just your students, but you as the instructor as well. So don't forget about that. If you're not comfortable going back, then don't, you know, I was, perfectly comfortable going back to teach. I was excited once I got there and my students just were so grateful and it was just such a good feeling and such a, as we all know who teach aqua, it's, um, it's such a community and a tribe water aerobics. Is, it's such a social thing and they need it. They need it badly. And so I, I found it interesting in, in, in Vegas um, and they're not open um, in Phoenix, but that so many of the clubs started when they did start their club, when we were open for just the month, um, they started and we too spaced out only 45 minute class. We just had 15 minutes in between land and aqua. But, um, so they, they, um, they didn't have their water aerobics starting. And I'm like, why are you not starting your water aerobics? You've got the chlorine. But what I determined is what they probably, what I figure they're thinking is we older adults come to water aerobics and there are most of them. I assume that's their safety and their theory. Our club knew we didn't go by that rule. So, um, so there's that. So ventilation, um, spraying equipment, but eh, and stop the recording button. I'm just kidding um, about me saying I have my own personal opinion and sometimes I, just, I flap my mouth about it. So um, you need to do what you're comfortable with, what your facility says. And I do, you know, I do keep it on in the C CDC guidelines. So, um, I'll stop rambling now. Laurel, um, do you have anything to say about the sanitation and equipment and all that kind of stuff? And I, I do. Um, so my company, we manufacture about 95% of our, our own products. And um, so I'm in contact with my suppliers to uh, see if they have any guidelines or anything for sanitizing uh, the different products. One of the, one of the issues is, is uh, depending upon what kind of, uh, product you use to sanitize uh, the, you know, for or this, you know, it could deteriorate the, the product. So, and like Manuel had said, you know, the chlorine pretty much will kill just about anything. So, um, we we have a customer. Uh, she's in Virginia. She teaches um, uh, swimming lessons for for children, and so one of her ways of kind of getting away from worrying about the, the majority of uh, sanitizing products was that she purchased um, all the backs, uh, the split back uh, floats. And then she's requiring her, um, her swimmers to purchase one. Uh, so that, that is a way to uh, kind of get a, a, away from having to uh, sanitize everything. Um, you know, uh, it's just, Every every area has different guidelines too. So California, we're a lot more stricter. You know, Virginia, they're open. Um, different parts of the country. Uh, so you know, Janice, like what you were saying, you have to really kind of check with your local, um, you know, in county and state uh, guidelines because uh, you know it's not a one fit all. And the CDC is so vague that um, you know there's a lot of uh, room for interpretation. So. 
my my recommendation is is uh, do what what you think is right because more so than not, you know, we have good common sense and and we're gonna we're gonna protect the people that that are part of our program. So, uh, but yeah, it just. Um, like, like I said, if I find out any information, um, cause a lot of our foam for the bells and things like that, um, I would think probably, uh, just natural, uh, you know, like maybe vinegar and water, you know, things like that would probably, would probably help and it wouldn't deteriorate the products, but you know, that's always something that you have to consider. So I'm looking into that and then I will, I will pass that information along if I, if I can get some, some good information for you guys. Great, thank you. And we always have a recap of our Zoom calls. So in a couple of days, um, if Laurel finds anything out by then and, and anything else that we've talked about on the call or anything else that comes up in the chat, uh, there's contact information um, if you want to get in touch with them. Uh, and I see a couple of things in the chat. Um, Melissa, um, I'm glad you brought that up about the, the locker room. Um, my, I was uh, communicating via email with my students through the whole closure to try to, you know, keep keep them posted and see how everybody was doing and do, I did a couple little very, very unprofessional, very lame <laughs> videos for them, nothing to do with aqua. So I just to keep them amused and uh, keep them going. And I know they appreciated it. But um, I, I told them like, okay, we're going back. If you feel comfortable, if you feel safe, come. We go right to the pool. You know, you don't have to even go in the gym. The pool door is right there. And I said, you don't need to use the locker room because it's home in your suit. So a lot of them chose to do that. Because I know, Melissa, you mentioned about the, the locker room. I mean, sometimes you're going to have to pee. So you're going to probably have to use. But um, that's another thing is just that locker room and, and making sure that your facility is keeping, keeping that clean. And, uh, and you've got someone in charge of that. And hopefully that person in charge of it is not you. So, and with sometimes it is though. So, um, I just wanted to add that. I know that, um, let's see who that is. Uh, Deborah is, she, she requires masks or shields for all her. is water resistant and the best hmm, that's interesting because when we had our um call that must be a real special kind of mask because when we had our call like i said a month ago um our our uh our expert was saying that they're they're not effective but um this must be a special one so thank you for that comment there deborah so everyone can see in the chat if you want if if you're interested in finding out more about that um okay i think i got everybody on that um on that question right Okay, number three, what things, and Laurel, I'm going to start off with this, what things can people do in their own pool? So, earlier, what a perfect time. So um, show us your equipment and, and um, what kind of things can we do to work out? So um, some of the, the equipment that has been used before in Fitness Fest was um, like uh, the bells and uh, the noodles. Um, things like that. There's a uh, multiple uh, usages that you can use with that, not just uh, holding them, but you could use them uh, with your your uh, putting the bells under your knees, isolating uh, certain parts uh, of your body. So, if you have one product, you know a lot of times there there could be multiple uses for it. So uh, we have products that that you could um, change the resistance level. Uh, we have, um, Ashley's going to be working with, uh, the wonder board and the, the noodles. She might be able to elaborate a little bit on, on what she found out when she tested it out. But, um, you know, you, you, as everyone knows, you can work as hard or as light as you want in the water. That's one of the great things about water. It, you, you can wa work out at, at your level and build up to that. And we have many products. Uh, we have a, it's called water walkers that um, you put on your feet and you, in the deep end, you can actually just kind of walk and then you can uh, build up your, your uh, cardio and then you can actually jog and then run in, in water. So there's no impact on your joints. And, you know, I'm sure everybody knows that a half an hour in the water is equivalent to an hour and a half on land. Uh, and the, and uh, the benefits are just, you know, endless because you're not, you're not putting any, 
any uh, pressure on the joints and, and you could work out so much harder. Uh, it's kind of like work out harder, you know, smarter and not harder type of thing. So, um, so yeah, we have, we have products that will meet anybody's needs. Uh, you know, whether it's a, a person just starting out or somebody that is a more competitive swimmer, we, we have those products as well. Um, one of the, when I was talking about one of the resistant, um, uh, paddles that we have. So, you know, if it's fully open, then it's less, you know, you, you don't have much resistance and then you could turn the dial so that, uh, it, it actually creates more resistance. So there's a, that's the dial on here. If I can do it, there we go. So then, you know, if you have it totally closed now, it's going to be super hard to, to use it. So we have those type of products. Uh, we have another one, it's called the, and Ashley uh, might be familiar, she, she might be talking about this, because this is a product that we sent her. Um, you can do all kinds of things. You can stand on it, kneel on it, um, sit on it. It's for uh, your core and uh, helping with balance and stuff like that. So um, yeah, you know, you can always shoot me an email if, if people have questions or um you know, need some ideas or whatever. We have a website that you can go to as well. So, um, yeah, just just a small, small, small uh, snippet of what of what we offer. Is is that um is that the wonder board that you just showed? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. It's like a V. Do you have your you have the bells there? Do you have your blue and yellow bells? We do have bells. Yes. Let Those me, are uh, my favorite. Um, and they're really, they're really nice and dense and they seem to last, um, quite nicely. I started using them. Um, yeah, one of, one of the, the things that you want to last. Wanna look for a product is you want a closed cell foam because clo the closed uh, cell doesn't allow the water to get in. And so it, it, your, your, uh, lifespan of the product will be a lot better when you have open and then it will deteriorate quicker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So Peyton's getting grabbing some. Good, come on, Peyton, show us your stuff. <laughs> we're uh, that's our daughter, this, Peyton. This is, yeah, so we're we're trying to. So this is uh this is the bells that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So we have different different sizes: uh, minimum, medium, and maximum. So it depends upon the foam size, you know, so it's equivalent to a uh, certain weight that you would work on land when you put it in water. Uh, and then these were the, the water walkers I was talking about, you put on your feet. Uh, this is very, these are very popular for people um, that uh, actually my daughter Peyton, she just uh, talked to somebody that uh, actually does a lot of hiking. And so he incorporates this in his workout for cardio and uh, stamina, uh, so that when he is going up in the altitude stuff, it actually helps helps him with, with this. So, like I said, we we have a lot of different different things that uh, depend upon what your needs are, um, what you're looking for. So, so yeah, that's, and we have you know swim goggles, you know swim caps, all that as well, fins and things like that. Yeah, cool. Ashley, t can you um, tell us more about uh, what your the workshops you're doing? Um, uh, at yeah, um, I think you just had out there. To find him real quick. Yeah, I'm teaching two workshops. One is going to be focused on the noodles, which are sprints noodles. The other is going to be focused on the wonder board. Um, there's a lot of fun content, but I'm not going to share it because you have to come to the workshop if you want to see the oh. content. So make sure you come hang out with me. But a lot of good fun stuff. Um, I was able because obviously Fitness Fest was supposed to happen before. So we had all this stuff planned. So I'm excited to revamp it and bring it back up to everybody for happening in September. Um, but I'm very excited. I love Laurel's products. I used them last year too at Fitness Fest and it's going to be great to do them again. Great. Okay. I want to, uh, we'll continue with the question about what, what workouts to do at, um, at home, Ashley, but I also want to uh, just made me think of this is that um, I want you to speak. Do virtual, um, you do virtual aqua workouts and what we talked about last month about like, sure, we all want to get in the water and feel it. We, we just do because we're water people. But 
tell me, tell everybody what you said about why this virtual thing is beneficial for instructors and about deck teaching. Great. Sure. So I, you did cut out again, so I didn't get all of it, but I think <laughs> um, in terms of participants, obviously like this is a different direction, but for instructors in the virtual world, um, even though it, it's not the same being in the pool and feeling it, and we do miss that part, I think it's been a really unique opportunity to practice our deck teaching skills and Manuel's taking a photo or something and say, Hey, Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's been really nice because we always, I know there's many teaching positions. Some of us teach in the water, some teach on deck, um, but on deck we ultimately know is the safest place to be for our participants and for us to see everyone that's happening in the pool, but is the most challenging. We're not born with the ability to levitate. It's hard to keep our balance on deck. And so it's an acquired skill, just like queuing. We have to practice our deck teaching skills. So it's been really nice to do these workshops virtually where I will step into my because I've converted my stop, my office into a studio as well. So I have my studio section over there and we do the entire practical section together on deck. So it's a chance for instructors to really feel what it feels like. We can try different modifications and find teaching styles that work for everyone. So I think that's, I think that's been a nice silver lining to our virtual aquatic world. But I also think it's going to be really fun when we can get back in the water because I miss it so much. <laughs> I think we can't deny that, right? So we've yeah. got some great ideas for, because everyone, when we go virtual in, in September, um, everyone's like, okay, what's that going to look like? And so we've got some unique ideas uh, for the aqua classes. Um, and Ashley and Manuel and I and, and Laurel have been talking about that. So stay tuned and don't be afraid to sign up for the virtual aqua workshops because you'll learn a lot. You'll get a lot out of it. We really are supposed to be doing these conferences. Learn to bring things back to our instructors, our students, not to get our aqua workout. So um, like Ashley said, like perfecting your deck, your deck teaching. So um, I don't know if I just cut out again, but um, Ashley, do you have any ideas um, to share about working out at home in the water? I do. Um, so I don't know if everyone knows, but my dear friend, Mark Grevelding has a website that's actually geared for instructors originally, fitmotivation.com. If you're not a subscriber already, reach out to me. I'll get you a coupon code. But he did launch this year, Pool Fit TV. And so he's not telling me to share this with you, but it's such a unique opportunity because he's filming uh, audio workouts and video workouts that are meant for the participant, not just for the instructor. So you're able to get in the pool and hope, like put your computer up. And I'm sure this is happening all over the place. I'm sure Manuel's got content too, then he'll share it as well. Um, but it's a great way to get lots of workouts from other trainers de delivering content that you can do in the pool. But if that's not an option, and again, I don't know how many of us in the room are instructors or are participants, but we all know the joy of water. The minute you get in, you're getting buoyancy and resistance and concentric muscle contraction with everything you do. So as long as you're safe and the water depth is correct and you're not alone in the pool, you can almost do anything your heart desires and get a great workout. And then taking then the content that Laurel shared, taking content that Manuel is sharing or other instructors out there to make your workouts fun to do at home. And a lot of people are teaching virtual classes too. So, you know, look on Zumba or not Zumba on YouTube or Facebook and find other leaders to give you new ideas. Yeah, that's Absol my part. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Manuel? Well, I agree with Ashley uh, in many ways. First of all, this is the time for everybody, every aquatic instructor to become a coach, a real good coach. We are not only trainers, we are not only teachers. This is the time that w because we, we, we can go in. <laughs> this is the time to perfect to s your skills, to shave and actually to what is the word that i want to use it's like perfecting and refine your skills as a coach verbally and visually and safely with you using all kind of stuff from um, because we can we can we can jump in <laughs> we can do that and this is the time for that second yes uh, options for options for options with equipment or without equipment great whatever you want to do this is what I've been doing personally lately I put the, my favorite playlist the do you know the songs that I feel that are gonna move me when I am in a very bad mood and I just start 
going. Each song is about three, four minutes. That means I've been doing high intensity interval training for three or four minutes. And then I decide one song is going to be cardio, one song is going to be strength training, one song is going to be all suspension, one song is going to be all practicing my core balance and, 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 and anchor skills. And then I, I don't feel that I am putting myself into a workout because sometimes you don't want to. And this days uh, it's kind of weird yeah if you are not very consistent to set yourself into a calendar or a schedule daily you know if you're working at home days can be very lax or very weird <laughs> you have somehow to find ways to uh, how can i survive this day today <laughs> right. how can i make it worth it then lately what i'm doing okay i'm gonna today is my I'm going to go to the pool. I'm going to put my, my, my favorite playlist. What I'm going to do now? Well, we're going to do one cardio, one strength, one balance. We're going to do one core training, one cardio again, one strength training. And then done with that. Okay, done, done, done. Take me between 25 to 30 minutes. It, it's, if you're working hard enough, that's enough time to be exhausted. And then to go back and to do some, some, some other stuff that you have to do. Yep. For the fitness fest, I'm gonna be teaching some high intensity interval training with Jeff, in with Jeff Howard too, some core training by myself, and then I think I have some yoga something online or something. I don't know, Janice, <laughs> you're weird with my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're a crowd pleaser, so we've got. I think you've got like four different workshops. So if you go to fitnessfest.org, Joanna, can you put that in the in the chat? Um, you can go right to the agenda. It's a really such a robust agenda. You'll, but you you know what? You can click just aqua and find all the aqua workshops. There's like a little um, color score. Where? Yeah, Manuel, you're you're doing. You're doing a variety of things because we like yeah. to use and abuse you. And yeah. Ashley is doing um, three really awesome aqua workshops, and uh, and then uh, and then Laura will be around in our virtual expo, um, so you can check all that out. Uh, so it's it's going to be really fun. Um, it's. It's uh, only 199 bucks and you get all your CECs for the three day weekend. There's lots of pre and post conferences too. So those are a separate um, fee, but um, so yeah. So thank you for that. What, what I did with um, when I got my belt from Laurel and those bells is, and I don't usually do a deep, well, I don't teach deep and I'm like, whoa, it kicked my butt. It was fun. It was, I just made it interesting for myself and um, it was a really great workout with no impact at all. So, um, so that, that was cool. And hopefully I'll finish that, finish editing. Tyler will finish editing that and I'll be able to put it on the market and we're going to do something with the video in conjunction with Laurel's equipment. So, um, okay. So let's move on to, um, and you guys keep, Keep moving in the chat, and then we'll answer any individual questions. Um, <clears throat> I just put uh, I just put on the chat the web page of the Rancho La Puerta, the resort that I'm working with, and I'm gonna invite you just to look into it because we do have a guest instructor program. We receive guest instructors every week, 52 weeks a year, uh, in all areas. But aquatics, I am the one in charge of that department. <laughs> Anyway, if you have something that you think is special, that is new, that is edgy, that I would love to, that you want the world to see, we do have a guest instructor program and we love to hear from you. Just send us, look into our webpage, get under fitness department, guest instructor program and send me an email and show me, tell me what you're going to do. What, what is your program about? And, uh, and then we find a way just to set we receive guest instructors in every area, mind, body, physical fitness, aquatics, and outdoors, because we do have a hiking program too. Uh, it's, we are in a 500 acres of land, imagine in, the, in here. Anyway, just- It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all ready to hop on like next week, right? And Mexico's <laughs> border, the Mexico borders are open. So oh I God. guess one of the few yeah, places but, but, that will but, take us. <laughs> yeah, people pay between six thousand dollars a week and you can come here for free teaching two or three hours a day. Hashtag just, just say, and I'm just, you know, hashtag, I'll put it there. <laughs> 
Hashtag Manuel. <laughs> okay, so finishing up, um, do you see changes in the aquatic world moving forward? Who wants to start with that one? Um, I guess I can go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think the I've noticed... So obviously I teach land formats as well. And so people are now getting comfortable working out virtually, working out from home. They feel like they are getting a lot of benefit from these Peloton and other companies that are doing stuff at home, which I love too. But I, we can't really replace the pool. So I do believe that when the world returns to some semblance of normalcy and we can get back in the water, our people are so anxious to come back to the water because we already know there's so much benefit in it. And we can reach all populations and all different types of participants in the water. So I think we're going to be okay on that respect. But I also do think it's allowed us now to, through virtual education, to, like Manuel said, improve our teaching skills as instructors. And so I think as instructors, at least the people I already know in this call, I've seen them at the virtual IFC. There's been virtual manias. There's virtual fitness fest. There's mini workshops. I'm doing my own private workshops. AEA is doing workshops. Every So we're getting so much education. So we're going to come back like super motivated, super educated and super excited to bring the content back to the pool. And I think it's going to really help boost the program in general and keep it thriving. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I love it. That that's the perfect answer. Thank you. I'm going to add on. I'm going to add okay. on to that. I t totally agree with that. What I think, what I see um, in the future is our water fitness department is not going to be our ugly docking anymore. <laughs> we are having the, the chance now as a trainer, as an instructor, to become more aware of my coaching skills and my skills because now I'm, I, need, I need to showcase and listen, it's really painful to see yourself in a video. It's really painful to see yourself teaching in a screen. That means it's really revealing when you are coaching, when you are talking, when you are moving, see what your students are watching. This has been a very interesting process and I I work with Manias and Idea and Canfit Pro and I've been doing many videos for other companies. I never see them. What I've been adding on to my my practice right now is I I I have a, a tripod, I put my phone here, I put my iPad on the other one that I had here, and I broadcast on my Zoom. I feel myself for in two ways to see how I move when I coach, how I coach and what kind of things I say. Because you see immediately feedback on the screen when you said right on do the da, da, da people are like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 I thought I said, but then you realize it's immediate feedback because it's different. There is no distraction. There is no water. There is no uh, people running around. There is no distraction. You are just funneling, funneling right into the screen i've been forced myself to improve improve my queuing improve my deck skill my rebounding way of moving my everything i think if you're if you pay attention as a trainer as an instructor you are going to become more as a coach and the, the the water field is going to improve in terms of how many instructors are going to be more skillful teachers and more better coaches verbally, visually, and auditory. And yeah, <laughs> it's going it. to be, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about what is going to be the next, the next step. I think this is a a turning point for the uh, the water fitness programs all over. We're gonna improve our our instructor skills. I love that. I think I, I yeah. love that you I love that you say that because I think that water aerobics instructors have some have gotten a little bit of a bad rap and some justifiably so because coordinators don't typically know how to train a water aerobics instructor. They just go, oh, you can do it. It's but it's not hard. It's different. And you've got to have some skills. So I, I love what you guys are saying about that. So get your virtual experience, get, you know, get education and be a better instructor and let's up our game. And so this is the perfect opportunity to up our game. Film yourself, film yourself teaching is the better. Um, in the next everybody, couple months everybody can give you feedback but the best feedback is yours if you put your phone and film yourself teaching that's a painfulest very painful 
because <laughs> there is no, there is, it's not subjective. <laughs> Oh, my butt's too big. Oh, no. Completely what you said is completely what you did. And nobody, you cannot say, no, I didn't do it. Yes, you did. Look. Yes, you, <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. And it's it's going to help you to improve your, your, your skills. And I'm sure we all want to be the best that we can be so that we can shine and so that we can get more students um, into our, you know, keep them, keep them healthy and safe and um, more fit and get more people in our class because we all love that. We all love a full class and to make a difference in the world. And yeah. another thing about virtual is we can, we can, we can reach the, the, whole, the whole globe as far as our education. So, um, yeah. Laurel, do you have anything to say about the changing aquatic world? Well, you know, I, I guess the, the biggest challenge regarding products is, um, you know, the, the regulations that are going to be implemented and um, actually just the people's comfort level on using products in, in their workouts. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you have a pool at home, you know, you, you don't have to worry about that. But if, you're, if you don't, then the challenges that, you know, arise from, from going to an outside facility you know, that's going to be a challenge. So, um, it, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is that uh, we have to weigh, um, weigh everything and make sure we stay safe and do everything we can to, to uh, achieve that. But uh, we also have to remember how much the water helps us in so many different ways and for so many different people that um, we, need to, we need to continue to give that message out you know, out to everybody so that they can benefit and have a, a better quality of life. I love it. And that's why we love to teach aqua and we believe in it. So that's great. Um, did, did Melissa, do you have a, did someone have their hand up and have a, have a question or does anybody have a question that they want to um, ask any of our panelists or, or, Put it in the chat, or you could even mute yourself if it doesn't get too unruly. <laughs> yes, you can unmute yourself. Actually, Laurel, my, my laptop died in the beginning. I had to reboot back in. What's the name of your company? Sprint Aquatics. I'm sorry, what? Sprint Aquatics. Oh, okay, okay. Sprint, Thank yeah. Joanna, it. can you put that in the chat again, please? <clears throat> and I'll do it in the, I'll put it in the Yes, and then everybody, 15% uh, off. You just need to mention Fitness Fest, and you get 15% off your, your order. Oh, cool. Thank you for that. Yep. I have a question about virtually teaching uh, our water students that since they can't go in the water, what are the options for them? I'm going to put that to Manuel and Ashley. I, I can jump in. I've been teaching to my water students virtually, mm -hmm. and it's almost like teaching a silver sneakers class. <laughs> you use a chair, you use your buoys, you use your equipment, you teach them how to footing, to use your feet, their feet, and to connect with the pelvic floor and use core, core stability. We practice the rebound issue, the, the, the bouncing up and down, and we move into uh, water movement. I encourage them just to, some of them, they have pools at home and they can travel uh, the phone to the pool and we can do that virtually. Some of them, they don't have the, the pool and I've been working with form, proper alignment, posture, and a lot of core training, a lot of balance and proprioception, which is great because if you take into consideration what is our, what is the, the bracket, the age of our population, and actually let's take that away. We all need core training because we are aging by the second. We are just aging. <laughs> and I just use the same principle that I use for my water classes, but on land, and I give them the chance now Imagine that you have water, all the things that you could maybe do and improve there, but now that you don't have, we can transfer those skills into the real environment that you need to move eventually at the rest of the day. Because if you don't have wings, you need to move on Earth. Then, yeah, 
that's a, that's that's and it's been working i've been consistently zooming at least twice a week and the group is kind of steady i have between eight to twelve people that comes and go yeah thank you cool. so Manuel, well would it be like an accessible yoga class like oh, a yeah. yoga? yeah okay. yeah and i and I, I use the same props i use my cushions and I, I, I play them. I use my chair. <laughs> I got my noodles. Props. I got my props. And yeah, I, now let's get the buoys and let's do what they move in the, in the water. But what if we don't have water? We put some resistance and then we just uh, mm, use one hand, one noodle, or we I, um, fake the resistance intrinsically through the range of motion of whatever the plane of action you're using it. And yeah, it's been, they're happy. And if they're happy and happy because I'm still making money. <laughs> right. And you're still being funny. So and I'm still having fun with them. Then yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. still affecting them and reaching them and they need it so badly. And, and speaking of that, Friday, same time um, and always free. Um, Dr. Evan Osar and his wife, Janice Maddock, and they're uh, speakers and sponsors for Fitness Fest. Actually, um, Evan's doing a keynote. But next week's um, topic is assessing and training the older adult virtually. So you'll want to tune in on that. I just checked his notes. I'm like, well, perfect. This is kind of a segue to what you just asked. He doesn't teach water, but still those same skills as far as teaching virtually is what we're all, what you're all, you know, what you're asking, Vicki, and, and, and a lot of you as well. So go ahead, Ashley. Um, did you, I know. You yeah, I was just, I was just going to add if you, um, I think it was perfect what Memel said. And if you felt like you needed some more content or guidance on like how to deliver those classes. The online arthritis program through AEA, they teach, it's an online certification and you can, you learn land and water at the same time. So then it's a great way to get more information on different exercises that we can do from our chair, different acceptable movement patterns. And then there's exercise guides as well. And then even just looking through the archives of the website, there's a lot of great lesson plans already out there. That'll be helpful just to get you started. Um, but again, like Manuel said, our people just want to see us and smile and move and feel happy and joyful. And that's a really great place to start. <laughs> and, and, get paid, <laughs> yeah. and get paid, Manuel. And get paid, yes. I get depressed if I don't see people, if I don't move. I need to move every day, and then I need to find excuses to enjoy, you know, to embark in these projects and make people to follow me. Hey, I'm doing this. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I see. Didn't you, um, didn't you work out with you? Did a little video with your sister last week? Yeah. Well, I do. I run a Latin dance class on Mondays uh, through Homeroom Fitness and on Fridays through my own platform. And then I've been doing these little clips of 15 seconds through TikTok just to promote my classes. And it's Latin dance. And then there is an option that if you like, the, you can grab the clip from the application and film yourself dancing with that person on video. My sister did that and it was insane how many messages through Facebook, Instagram and Twitter we have. Oh my God, siblings and there are. We did a second one that is gonna be aired um, tomorrow actually <laughs> because it was so good and so much responsive and yeah. it's been dragging people to my platform that is great why not yeah we my sister and i we were dancing salsa and stuff <laughs> yeah make sure you put um all three of you put in the chat how they can follow and stalk you okay because oh. um laurel's got great equipment ashley's got great videos manuel's got great you know virtual videos and and social media presence so um Just so why name. don't you what's that follow my name follow my name manuel Velasquez. follow his name it, make sure you, you check Velasquez. that spelling because we've gotten it wrong before, right, Joanna? <laughs> so there it is, right on his little, his little cute face there. Find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. It's the same because you know what? Consistency is the clue for, for professionals. If you put some other kitty name, and nobody's going to find you. You have to use your right. name. Right. I know. I've seen that. Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> So I do have a nickname because I'm from the generation where everyone named their daughters Ashley. So I have to put Ashley oh, yeah. Bagel Bishop <laughs> in between. So you can find me almost anywhere Ashley Bagel Bishop. Um, but I'm really bad at Facebook. It takes me a long time to get back. So find me on Instagram or email me. I'm much better at those. <laughs> okay, she put that in the chat, but I'll also put that in um, the email recap follow-up. 
and then record and then the recording of this in case you um, want that. Laurel, anything, any, anything from you, Laurel, to add? Did, we, we put your website in a couple times. Uh, Jeannie, who had to leave the call, just asked for your email, so I'll make sure I get that to her. Um, she's, she's one of our uh, local friends. So, Okay, and we have a Facebook page as well, Sprint Aquatics. Yes. Okay, cool. So, website and, and Facebook. So, yeah. And, of course, Fitness Fest has a um, Facebook page um, and, uh, and Instagram so please follow us. We really all love to be popular, you know, some it's about money, but it's also about ego. Uh, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but <laughs> I'm probably speaking for Manuel too, but <laughs> right. No, That's I, a good no, thing. You're talking about yourself. I'm really shy. <laughs> yeah. Answer. Yeah. You're really shy. Yep. I know. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, so Maggie is, uh, someone said they're going swimming. going swim um i am pff, having my glass of chardonnay where is the where is it five o'clock it's five o'clock in um new mexico and texas somewhere. i think somewhere. so somewhere for sure so that's where i'm going um <laughs> anybody wants to hang out and, and ask any questions or chat feel free um give it a couple more minutes and I hope to see everybody next week on the fit pro connection connection. Cause it's going to be a good one as well. I thank Laurel. I thank Ashley. I thank Manuel so much. You guys were amazing. Um, I thank everyone for hopping on. Um, this is a great opportunity. I look forward to it every week. doesn't matter where I am or what I'm doing. I look forward to it. And so um, we hope that you guys enjoyed today and enjoy um, all our Fit Pro connections, and we hope that we will see you virtually um, in September uh, for our Fitness Fest. You'll definitely see Laurel, Ashley, and Manuel, and Maggie. <laughs> Maggie is a one of our Maggie. Um, um, <clears throat> you, um, mute yourself. You're mute, Maggie. There you go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Janice, uh, Melissa Crone actually has her hand, her hand up, so I think she has another question. Go ahead, Melissa. Yeah. yeah, I do. Actually, I wanted to follow up on how you virtually teach a class when the seniors are a little technologically challenged or don't have a way to get a phone or a computer or whatever out by a pool, outdoor pool. Like what's how, because I'm kind of challenged with that. Well, Anything I've been with some of my so some of my seniors. I've been engaging their relative. There is a daughter, a neighbor, a niece, a granddaughter who is gonna. I ask them find somebody who can help us, and then engage, bring that person to set the computer or to set the the yeah the connection, and then we do. Yeah, because yeah, and still. <laughs> And still, it happens, it happens that sometimes there's one of them that's challenged. <laughs> they're using their phones or their iPad, and then you see this happening, boom, and then you see the person falling down, and then you, okay, here we go. Um, if you just breathe deeply, smile, yeah. none of them, you smile internally, and then you help them to come back, and then, yeah. And you know, they don't, we, want to use, they don't want to use electronics a lot out by the pool. I haven't, yeah, well, I haven't had any ch any problem with that uh, because usually what they do is the iPad and they put it on, on, a, on a chair or on a table that it's safe distance, then they can see me. And basically what I'm doing is coaching. I ask them if you have a speaker is better because it's going to increase the volume of the, my voice. And what I, even though they cannot see me, it's oh, about yeah. the coaching yeah. and the wording. Now we're gonna we'll go into jump or a jack from the jack of the jug, cross country ski, whatever it is, and then let's move this way. Full range of motion, blah. And I, I had to guide them through auditory cues. Okay, that helps. Good. And yeah. then my other follow up was regarding sanitizing and cleaning equipment. So I know, Manuel, you were saying that you're having these ambassadors at your resort you know, take the equipment from people and that you feel that, um, you know, being in the water, the chlorine is enough. Uh, what about the people touching the equipment? Are there anyone else in between? Like, at what well, point do we need to worry about, you know? 
Well, our, our ambassadors already have gloves, a face mm -hmm. shields, and mask. Yeah. And, and, the, and when you walk into the pool area, there is sanitizers on the wall. And now we have these beautiful things that are water and you don't touch anything. You put your, it is a pedal on the floor, you press it, water comes, you wash, da, 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 and then you go in to get your equipment. And once if you, you or if you're not used, lucky enough to, go ahead, go ahead, Manuel, sorry. sorry. Once it's used, it's chlorine all over the place, then, our ambassador returned them to, they don't, our guests won't storage anything. We are doing all that work for them. Uh, in that sense, I think we are minimizing, the, it's minimal the, the, the chance for virus transmission or into the equipment itself, I think. Right. And if you don't happen to have a brand, an ambassador for that, which most of us probably don't, like when I went back to teach, I did, I did it myself and they gave me enough time in between and make sure your facility is paying you for that. So they gave me enough time in between, you know, I'm, you know, that's the, the sorry, I, that's not right, you know, so in my opinion, so we're trying to keep our members safe. So you know, if, if so I had a 45 minute class and then I had a, a 15 minutes in between. So I sprayed it. And then I'm, I was the one touching it. So, and then my next one, same thing. So minimizing, like Manuel said. So you work in a place that doesn't take care of that, Melissa? Well, I haven't got, they haven't opened yet. They haven't gone back yet, but the YMCA where I work, I mean, yeah, I would be doing everything and I don't even know what kind of protocols. That's why I said, uh, concerns about the locker room because the locker room situation there is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been back since March since they closed down because uh, they did, they reopened for two, three weeks here in Los mm -hmm. Angeles and then shut down again, but they never yeah. opened the pool again because mostly seniors take the aquatics right. classes and because of the locker room situation. And, you know, she basically has kids cleaning it. So I'm leery about going back. Yeah. Well, well if you don't feel you. comfortable, yeah. I can tell you, Ann Gilbert in Florida, she owns two facilities, and I, I was talking to her last week, and she, the county where she is, in Tampa, I can't remember, uh, they asked her as a, a club owner to follow through with uh, fire uh, rules and county rules uh, uh, in relation to procedures and how people walk in and walk out into the gym and into the, the pool facility. She had the pools behind uh, on the back of the building. They have to open a new door. People walk in, they walk through the locker room or not. They have the options. The locker rooms are not um, functional. They just using just two towels or whatever, but not to change. People comes in already dressed or prepared to jump in the pool once they get out of the pool they have to go into a separate door which used to be an exit door an emergency door now it's a regular door and go back into the parking lot that uh, that's how they manage that in tampa uh i guess the wise would need to follow through with whatever the state the county or the mm -hmm. yeah the government sets or impose rules through through the gyms in that area yeah, checking with your 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 oh county, God, the right. CDC. Um, if your facility is not going to oh, set yeah. rules out, you may have to go to bat for yourself and for your students. Yeah. Sounds like in your yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can relate to that sometimes, so. Okay, my friends, if you don't have any questions, I need to go, I gotta go. Okay, I gotta go too. It's happy hour, man. Joanna, you can sh shut off the recording now. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been great.